let's talk about the steam cracker, which is the heart of the petrochemical plant. This is the main unit which will be producing the most petrochemicals in the world or in the plant. Okay, so steam cracker, remember that we will be using naphtha as raw material and what we want to do is to obtain the most amount of ethylene, propylene, butylene and but at the end. Okay, so how do we do this? We're going to be using two main stages. The first one will be hot, will be high in temperature and average in pressure. Some even state that compression stage is a, let's say, stage per se, but I actually prefer to get them into the second part, which is cold stage. The cold stage must be high pressure, low in temperature. The main concept or the main idea is to produce lots of olefins. Olefins must have double bonds in carbons. The typical feedstock is naphtha and liquefied petroleum gas, or even natural gas, if even. Chemical processes exist to convert the heavier components into more useful materials. So you have CXHY, which you don't know, you don't care. You're going to have water and oxygen, and what you, what you want to do is to maximize ethylene, ethane, acetylene, hydrogen gas is a byproduct, Carbons, these are oxidated carbon materials. Methane, well, technically you don't want that, but that's a byproduct. This is propane, no, propylene, this is what you want. This is what you want the most. This is what you want also, also. Ethane, no, propane, butane, butylene, this is also very important, has double bond. Hexane, uh, technically this is benzene, some carbon, leftovers, heavy oils, and so on. Okay, important parts right here, let me remove this here. The important ones are, this is the most, secondly will be this one right here, third will be these guys right here, and this will be the last, no, technically this. And this one right here, this one right here, this one right here will be going as natural gas or liquefied petroleum gases. These can be used as syn gas. And this is benzene. You want to separate that. You want to take away the carbon solids material and coke. And the heavy oils must be removed. Reaction temperature, as stated before, must be high, 700 to 800 Celsius. The reaction is pretty complex because we are producing a lot of material in the run, so it will be of no use to state each individual kinetic and individual material because you're using bulk material chemistry, so just assume that you're getting this material. Talking about the structure, we got the hot section, we have a lot of furnaces, well, technically not furnaces, but they are the reactors which are producing the olefins. Then you have the compression, quenching, and this is the cold section. What you want is low temperature and plenty of distillation towers in order to remove the ethane, butane, propane, methane, and so on. Talking about that, let me show you this image. So this is a steam cracking unit in Wilton in the northeast of England. You can see there are plenty of towers. What are those towers? Well, first I want you to answer this question. Is this the hot section or the cold section? Well, as stated before, these are the distillation columns, therefore this must be in the cold section. Okay, so this is the cold section. So let's go to number one, this tower right here. What's this? This is a debutanizer which separates C4 from C1, C3 mixes. So clearly these are very volatile materials, these are made in volatile. What you want to do is first remove all C4 material. Now they will go to the second stage, which is the depropanizer, remove C3. So here, let's say C3 removes, or well, technically will go down C3, and this will be C1 and 2. 1 and 2. Here as well, you have C1 up to 3, 
We're going to see this later on, don't worry, more technically. But I want to show you the main concept, and this is C4. Then we continue, and this stream will go to the stage number three, which is the deethanizer. Now, this will separate C2 hydrocarbons. So C2 hydrocarbons. Well, this is the C1, and C2 will be going here. What are the C2 hydrocarbons? Well, ethane and ethylene and acetylene. Then let's go forward. This is for A here. We got the demethanizer, which separates out the methane. So this will separate the methane. 5A is the C3 splitter, which separates propane from propyne. So this is the double bond, and this contains single bonds. This is stage number five. So this is propylene, and here it goes. Then six here is the C2 splitter. Remember that we gotta ensure that we separate the ethylene from the ethane. So this will have the double bonded carbons and this will go as here. Okay, so you got the idea. We are going to have plenty of separations, especially between C1, C2, C3, and C4 materials. And these are the units. Again, this is just an overview, okay? So let's see how it goes. We got a pyrolysis furnace. Those are here and here. You have fuel because you must increase the temperature. You have water. Remember that this is steam cracking. And you got naphtha. You got here, there's reaction. Then you bring the material here. There will be some more, let's say, cooling. And then you scrub the waste oil. Remember that we're going to have some oils and we are going to remove all other materials then we have also the c2 c3 c4 which are recycled so remember well from here we're going to have these materials the saturates what do we imply with saturates that this is ethane propane and butane materials okay very important we're going to apply the same pyrolysis then we're going to clean this scrubbing and then now that we're ready we are going to compress this we compress this we separate the light material which typically are hydrogen gas carbon monoxide and the c1 c3 materials some c3 c4 material we go down and then we got the washer essentially what we want to do is to remove all the leftover material we dry them and we have only c1 versus c3 we got the demethanizer which will take away methane here we have c2 c3 we have the deethanizer here we have c2 cut and c3 cut and the important part is that we need to ensure that we remove the here it goes the ethane or the splitter so this is the splitter here we have ethane and here we have double bonded and triple bonded material so it goes down here to the acetylene tower so here it goes from the acetylene we separate acetylene here this stripper the recycling will go here remember that this will be the c2 material acetylene is c triple bond ethylene topping steel, ethylene tailing steel, and then we got the pure ethylene material. This is C double bond. Remember that this is the 60% of materials we use in petrochemicals. Now let's get back. Remember the deethanizer separated C2 from C3 cut. Let's go back. And you will see here that we got C3. And from here, C3, C4, we got the c4 so we are mixing these c3 and c4 the botanizer is going to have c4 here this goes to c3 cuts the proponizer this is going to have the single bonded three carbon molecule and you have the propylene here c3 splitter is going to ensure that propylene is purified and all the material is recycled now talking about C4, it's going to go directly here and we're going to purify C4 and boot at the end. So these are very important. This is the double bonded 
or technically this would be something like this. The double bonded butane, and this will be the single bonded butane, which is brought here, butylene. All the leftover materials will be saturates, steady before C2, C3, and C4. Go back, pyrolysis, and all this gets uh, recycled, and technically they will be increased in yield. Okay? This was just an overview. Make no worries. We're going to see this part by part. Actually, we're going to separate this into the hot section, cold section, and so on. Okay, this is exactly the same. You got your feed, furnace, steam, leftover material, cleaning, compression, caustic soda for cleaning, and then you got the light gases, you got the secondary methanizer, gasoline, ethylene, ethane. It's exactly the same, just different uh, arrangement. Important part right here is to detect and be sure that you can uh, separate the hot section from the cold section. Okay, so now let's go more technical. Let's strip this process and let's see why is it so uh, interesting and why do we get that many olefins from it.